So we've got a great lineup for the next couple of days, uh, and I'm really pleased to announce uh, our first speaker, who's Stuart Gilray, uh, who works, uh, founded uh, Just Ask Water, which is a, a local games company just up the road in Ilkley, uh, but the past few years have been working with uh, Odd World Inhabitants uh, and Lawn Lanning, uh, so a gigantic franchise, uh, and they've been working uh, together with Odd World uh, to kind of remaster it, reboot it, and bring it back. Um, so I'm delighted to welcome Stuart to the stage. Thank you. Morning. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, right. Um, Tom asked me about four or five weeks ago to do this, and uh, I literally just finished doing a presentation at Eurogamer um, for the project we're working on at the moment, which we'll go into in a little bit. But when he asked me to do this, I was not humming high, but trying to work out what we're going to talk about today. Because I, I don't know much about animation personally. I can tell you how many animations we have in our projects, but that's about it. Um, and if it looks good or not. <coughs> So with this, I thought I'd do is talk about Oddworld, where we are now and where we're heading to in the future, not just as a company, as a brand, or as the titles, but just as a, the, the industry in general. Um, that's me. Uh, right, so as Tom said, not only am I CEO of Just Add Water, I'm also the development director of Oddworld Inhabitants. Um, and it's quite unusual to have two hats, effectively, one for the publisher, Oddworld, and for the developer, just had water. So to be able to juggle that internally in the office is quite um, difficult sometimes, as I'm sure some of our staff will attest to and the people we work with. Um, so the present. What we wanted to do with Oddworld, I mean, I'm first of all sort of a, a fan of the brand going back to the first Abe, Abe's Odyssey game in 1997. Um, so th this to me isn't just work as such. This is more of a hobby come work because it's something I enjoy doing. It's a brand I know very well and I'm a fan of. So to be able to work with and on it is, is fantastic. With bringing the brand back though, it's been dormant now since 2005. Uh, the original team shut down development in April 2005, just after they released Stranger's Wrath on Xbox One. So since then, you know, the franchise is come dormant, quite quiet. Uh, in the past two years, we've tried to sort of bring it up slowly again, because we want to go back and finish off the original um, intention for the brand, which was a, a series of five games called Oddworld Quintology. So far, we've had Abe's Odyssey, uh, Munch's Odyssey, and the next one, the third in the series, is going to be called Squeak's Odyssey. Um, but it's trying to refine, redefine this brand, bring it back up to a modern era, um, but to not lose what the brand was about in the first place, which was, which was quality. Uh, not just storytelling and gameplay, but the fact that every single artist at Oddworld was movie industry originally. Uh, all the modelers and animators did movies prior to working at Oddworld. I think actually there's a couple that didn't do, but they were literally hired straight out of university and college. But everybody else in the art side worked uh, for a company called Rhythm and Hughes, which did visual effects in the late 80s, early 90s, um, as well as some other films. The CEO of Oddworld, Sherry McKenna, produced a movie called The Last Starfighter, which I think came out in 1981, and it was the first film to use CG, proper CG, in movies. Um, unlike, say, Tron, which didn't use any CG at all, really. It looked like it doesn't do. That's another story. Um, <clears throat> so, to bring this brand back, um, we have to stick close to what it was about in the first place, which was the storytelling, and stay true to the art quality. So we've had a, not I won't say a problem, we've had a tough time making sure that the people we've hired at, at Just Had Water um, are very, very capable. So to get this moving forward, we've, we've tried to do it step by step with the projects. We originally did Stranger's Wrath on PC, which was the Xbox version ported to PC. And then we did a PlayStation 3 version of that, which um, we basically restarted a lot of the art again. All the characters were redrawn. You know, the main character went from 3,000 polygons up to, say, 20,000 polygons. So we added a lot more detail to it. And it was a test to, to us as, as Just Add Water and to Oddworld. And that was to show that to Oddworld that we could do this work and we could be their future development team for the next series of projects, which is why we've done it bit by bit. Um, you know, original port, then a remaster, and the next one being complete from the ground up project. Um, so with all that, that in mind, it's about keeping the fans happy and appealing to them uh, and telling those guys that we're back again as a company. You know, you want to play our products again. Do you remember our products originally? You know, some of these people who are playing Oddworld <coughs> 
15 years ago, 15 years ago? Yeah, 15 years ago, are, are some of them are parents now themselves with small children. Um, some of them weren't even born then. In fact, a, a quick example is two of our artists um, would have been three years old when the first game came out in 97, which for me is kind of scary. <laughs> So, yeah, so we want to get hold of the fan base again, re re revitalize it, and go from there. Which brought us on to how to release products. Traditionally, Oddworld would be based on physical media, releasing to discs, um, you know, CDs, DVDs, and stuff. But in this marketplace today, unless you've got you know, millions of dollars at hand to be able to manufacture discs, you just can't do it. So digital distribution was the model we decided to go with. As it happens, retail sales are falling anyway. You know, uh, in September, as I said here, UK retail sales count for less than 50% of all sales, which was quite surprising. I kind of thought maybe this time next year we might have the point where digital sales are catching up with retail sales. But no, no, this year it's already overtaken it. So by this time next year, possibly, we may see, may see a case of the only, your AAA Call of Duties will be the only thing you'll get at retail, anything smaller than the massive, GTA 3, you know, fives, Metal Gears, etc., will not be on retail, will be exclusively in digital. In fact, some of the console manufacturers currently, starting you know, April next year, are insisting that all products are submitted digitally and on disc for submission, of, you know, for release. So you have to do digital versions as well. So with digital, um, it allowed, especially with Steam platform, we released the two Odd World, Odd Ge Odd World games two years, three years ago on Steam, um, and that helped us start bringing a revenue stream for a small company to come back up again. And from there, we've gone on and released on PlayStation Network. Um, we haven't released on Xbox yet, but that we are next year. Um, so, to give you an example of how well this has worked for us, the two original Abe games, I said, released in 2009 um, digitally on Steam, and then in late 2009 on PlayStation Network. Um, they've sold over 800,000 units in just under three years, literally. Um, all we had to do is send them a copy of the disc, basically. They digitized, well, turned it an ISO image or whatever you want to call it, and put it on their platforms instantly out. And that's been released on PC, PS3, PSP, and PS Vita. And for, actually, for a short time, anyone who's got an Xperia Playphone could buy PS1 games, I believe, on their store on there. Um, then, last Christmas, we released Stranger's Wrath HD on PS3. Uh, it did pretty well. We're quite, quite chuffed with that. Uh, Ten months to work on it, to make it. Um, from, I think we'd started March last year and it was out by Christmas. Uh, 200,000 sales plus since last Christmas. Released the PC version in August this year. And then the Vita version is coming out mid-December this year. So that, that was our first project to just add water as a proper let's start again with an Audible title. Let's not just release it, let's do some serious work on it. And that was, that was kind of cool because we could add things into the game, we could change parts of the game. So we changed the whole UI system, we up, upgraded all the graphics and stuff, uh, higher resolution textures, we added Easter eggs into the gameplay itself, we added concept art which had never been seen before outside of the Oddworld offices. Um, and a lot of the fans dug that, we'd paid that extra attention to the title itself, not just repackaged it and chucked it out. And that's what we're about doing going forward is, is to giving something back to the fans by adding more content than the original releases. Um, an example is uh, Munch's Odyssey, which is out in December this year in the States um, and hopefully Europe as well. Um, again, that will have unlocked extras in it, uh, which haven't been seen before outside the offices. Um, it's been taken as a little longer than we'd hoped, taken 18 months instead of what we'd originally planned to do. but with the game 11 years old now, it's, you're working with technology which someone hasn't touched since 2001. So to, have to get out to work on today's hardware has not been the easiest task at all. So that's Munch. Um, what else have we got? Uh, we want to do some, with the digital space, you obviously got mobile devices and smartphones. So we released Oddworld Portal, which is literally just uh, uh, an iOS interface for the website where you can get downloads and stuff for your phones or iPads. Um, instant news on the go, so you have to navigate a, a website which wouldn't normally work on a phone. Uh, and then a little project we called Oddworld Abe Speak, which we started working on two years ago, which um, it took a little longer than we planned, mainly because we stopped and started about five times. But that's out this coming Friday, 
uh, 79 pence on the Apple Store, App Store. Uh, then hopefully around Christmas time on Android and maybe New Year Windows Phone 8 as well. So we'll see how that goes. But the reason we wanted to do some mobile projects is because people have been saying to us, when are you going to bring ABO on iOS or other smartphones? And to us, it's, it's a game which probably won't lend itself very well to those devices because the original PlayStation 1 version of the game, it relied on specific direct input, running and jumping at exact points, pressing the jump button at the exact point. On an iPhone screen or iPad screen, you can't really do that effectively. So we thought, let's not do those games on those devices. Let's diversify and do something extra on the side. So we made a couple of little, little projects, or little fun little games. Um, I said, they're either going to be free or the bottom tier, basically, on, on Apple's App Store. So, future. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Oddworld is still all about doing AAA projects. Um, so we have you know, pretty large budgets. The way we're working, though, we're going to have it so we'll have <coughs> our main story-led projects, like the Od Abe's Odyssey and Munch's Odyssey and stuff, they'll be on console and PC for the foreseeable future. Um, but we want to do, as I said, more accessible, smaller titles on mobile platforms, uh, which we are doing. Uh, so well, it's one out this Friday. We're going to have two out next year as well. But we also wanted to see what we could try and do with doing, quote, quote, triple A on mobile devices. So we're looking at some of the older projects, not the first two Abe games, and seeing what we can go with those on iPads, etc. And with the fact now that you know, iPad is more powerful than you know, an Xbox 360 in some degrees is quite scary. You know, where it's going to keep going is a year from now, we're going to have something that's going to be as powerful as 10 360s. Who, who knows? Um, I think Apple got a lot to answer for over that, but uh, that's, I digress. Um, so, yeah, we've got more projects coming next year um, on mobile devices, something which is going to be a little bit bigger than we have done so far. And then the big one, which we announced at Eurogamer properly, was Odd World, Abe's Odyssey, New and Tasty. Now, this is a project I've been wanting to do for about three, four years now. I've been bugging a friend of mine who knew Lauren Lanning before I knew Lauren to say, Lauren should go back to these original two properties and rework them, revisit them, and do something with them. And he was always hesitant to do that. Then in a, two years ago in a conference call with the, the board at Oddworld, Lauren and I were told off by the then president of the company for spending no time talking about what the problems we were meant to be talking about and talking about redoing Abe. So since then we've been working this, these ideas up back and forth and stuff, and this project is the culmination of those ideas. We've still got another year to go, um, but we're, we're, so far we're pretty happy with it. Uh, anyone would like to see some footage of it? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same footage from Eurogamer, so don't, don't get too giddy. Now that footage to me is seven weeks old and seriously outdated. Since we finished Eurogame, we spent the whole of October going over the whole thing and saying, what did we do wrong? And we stripped the heck out of it. The section where you possess that first slag, for example, the lighting's completely changed there. We've kind of wanted to add some uh, suggestions to the player about the gameplay in certain areas. How, do we actually, how does the player know what to do in this area without having to rack the brains and get killed hundreds and hundreds of times. So things like lighting will be changed in certain areas. So when there's an area that Abe creeps through, there may be, I don't know, say an uplighter which projects this huge shadow of Abe creeping past up on the wall. That sort, those sort of little things like that. By doing it in 3D, it allows us to iterate that kind of stuff really, really quickly. Um, I'll also mention the caveat I mentioned at Eurogamer as well. All the particle effects, rubbish. We did them the day before, about six hours before we left the office, so please forgive us. Um, again, with the project, with, with Abe, it was, to me, the, the reason I wanted to redo this project was it was a fantastic game. The only thing it let it down to some degree 
was that those beautiful vistas in the background of, of the levels, the play area, um, I wanted to, them to do something. An analogy I give is the original Ridge Racer game. It's just a car on the track, but you've got you know, planes flying overhead. There's something going on in the background to kind of like bring that world to life. So with Abe, the same thing there again, which is why that first section, when the camera opens up and you see the, the conveyor belts in the background, all the barrels going back and forth. That's an example of what I meant about bringing those backgrounds to life and environments to life. Uh, and that's what we're doing. The other thing you, that demo which has completely changed is there's a long elevator ride down. It's tiny now, only about one screen's worth effectively, one screen height. And then there's a whole new section we've, we've added and changed since this. But what you saw there has been scrapped effectively in the second part. Um, and that was something we, we based on feedback from the people that saw it at Eurogamer and online since. And something we wanted to do was to test the water with this early pre-alpha footage and say, you know, where do we think we got it right and wrong? But where did the fans think we got it wrong as well? And that feedback from that has been fantastic. Um, and I think maybe next Tuesday when we're doing something with Jamie in Leeds, that'll be the last time we'll be talking about you and Tasty until E3 next year. So after this, we're going dark. So platforms, we're on PlayStation, PC, and XBLA next year. The PC version will come out a couple of months after the console versions, mainly because to get a PC product right is really hard. As we found out two years ago when we released the original Stranger's Wrath on PC, we got hammered by the press and I didn't sleep for two weeks because I thought I actually killed the Oddworld brand outright in the space of a day, effectively. Um, but we spent an extra, I don't know, maybe five months this year getting the PC version of Stranger's Wrath right and releasing it. The fact that the last update went out about three weeks ago and I think everybody that has got it now is happy, I hope. I haven't heard anything on the contrary, but there you go. Um, Abe's out holiday season next year. Um, exactly what that means, I don't know yet. Probably between October and January, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> it depends if we get done in time, really. Uh, so yeah. Now, future. I wanted to handle about, talk about digital distribution here, which I know to some of you probably is maybe not what you want to hear talk about, but to me, it's not just about how you buy your media. It's how your media is delivered to you. Uh, we've seen recently that you know, your Xbox and your PS3 isn't, aren't just doing games. They're doing music. They're doing video. They're doing TV programs. They're doing catch-up TV. They're doing internet to a degree. And what does that mean for going forward? Does that mean we're going <clears> to... <throat> be playing a la Gaikai, like I say, here on a web browser? I don't think so. I think, particularly with Sony and with Microsoft, I think they're, what they're trying to do is, is increase the speed at which you get your content. Now, that may well be that you have a Gaikai client on the PlayStation or some other form of technology therein, but it's about getting the, the, the products to you, the customers, and to me, the customer, as quickly as possible and as painless as possible. Um, an example, I guess, one thing that annoys me with PS3 and Xbox is the fact that I do system updates every month or so. I, I don't like that, and I hope that whatever happens next, that disappears. Uh, same with, you know, with PCs as well. I mean, I'm not a huge PC gamer, um, but again, the way the content is delivered to me, I don't want to have to wait five, six hours to download the latest title. So the pre-order systems like Steam do, where you pre-download what you've already bought, is kind of cool. So hopefully, future consoles will be the same as well. Do I think the PlayStation brand is going to end? Far from it. Do I think we'll have more consoles for Microsoft and Sony? Yes. I don't think they'll necessarily be what big hulking machines we have today. They might be simply a small box like an Apple TV size which sits under your telly. But I think those devices will still exist. Be a lot more accessible to everybody and they won't just be about games. They'll be about every form of media you want in your house. So it will be your TV, yeah. You know, maybe future TVs will have a an adapter you plug in your console module into the back of it, using some standard system. Who knows? But when I read in the press about that's it, this is the last generation of consoles. I I, I don't believe it yet. Consoles have been around for so long now. I just think it means that the, what we define as a console is changing and evolving, and it will not be the same as it has been this generation or two generations ago. Yeah, so it's, it's about how that media is delivered to us at the end of the day. It'll probably be the same for movies as well. You know, we are at a state now that when you buy a movie, for example, you're getting a Blu-ray edition. On the other side of the disc, you get a DVD edition and you get a digital edition as well in the one box for your 10, 15, 20 quid. You know, 
Games will be a similar thing, I think, but you'll get download codes as opposed to a disc, unless it's maybe Uncharted 10 or something. I don't know, you know, whether they, they want 25 Blu-rays or whatever is in the box. It, you know, it, it's it's hard to tell. But I think for right now, I think for at least the next year, we're going to see that market d dwindling slightly on retail and only special editions things and the big triple A's coming out on disc, uh, and then more and more on digital, especially over the next 18 months to two years. I think maybe 2015 we might see a point where retail just stops being important at all. So, and because this is the film festival, animation festival, sorry, I thought I should probably throw in a bit of animation trivia. For Oddworld, that is. Uh, Abe's Odyssey had 96 animations in it. Abe's Exodus had 125. Munch's Odyssey had 290. And Stranger's Wrath had 3,650 in it. I'm not looking forward to Abe, the new one, because <laughs> that's going up the way. <laughs>